So on to part two of section 14.3 of chapter 14. So we're still talking about structure and acidity and basicity. And so we have relative strengths of acids and bases and they're dictated by Ka values, which is ultimately dictated by the structure of molecules. And so here's our learning outcomes and expectations for part two of 14.3. Uh, Yeah, continuing the journey, 14.3 relative strengths of acids and bases. And so we talked about acids. We talked about acids and their ability to donate protons. We talked about bases and their ability to donate or accept protons. And so what we haven't talked about so far is what that acid is. Like we've had lists of numbers of Ka values, talked about pH is strong versus weak. But really now we're going to talk about the heart of this, which is what is the identity of A and how does that dictate how much, how willing it is to give up that H plus. And so there's two primary classes we're going to talk about. And so when branching all of acids, at least all of Brownstead acids, you can have binary acids and then you can have non-binary, which are also known as polyatomic acids. And so starting out with the binary acids, you go to the Latin roots, it translates to two things, right? And so these acids are made of two things. In this case, these things are elements. And so one of those two has to be hydrogen because that's our definition of a Bronsted acid. And so the other thing has to be a different element. And so it doesn't mean it's just two atoms. It just means it's two kinds of atoms. And so we'll show what that looks like in a second. But one class of these is the hydrohalic acids. Um, basically, you look at your halide portion, of the, uh, the, the column 17 on the periodic table. That's your halides, right? That's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, so on and so forth. Each one of those has seven electrons. They can pair with a, a hydrogen, which has one electron. It fulfills an octet. There is a single bond. And so the Lewis dot structures, all these are essentially H bonded to F with three lone pairs. Same thing with these guys. And so those are known as the hydrohalic acids. We can have other non-binary acids. Remember, the definition is just two types of atoms, but it can be more atoms than just two. And so what do we mean by that? If you look at NH3, it has two types of atoms, Ns and Hs, but it has four of them. And so for every N, there's going to be three Hs. Uh, water, that's that's a um, uh, binary acid, but it's, it's, it's more atoms than two. In this case, it's H2O, H2S, CH4, even methane. If you have a strong enough base, you can deprotonate and steal one of these protons. And so it's only two atoms. It's a C and an H, or it's only two types of atoms, a C and an H, but it has five atoms total. And so these are all classified as binary acids. And in this series, you have hydrohalic, and then you have everything else. And so for this series, I mean, for any acid, it's basically the, the strength of the acid is dictated by how strong the bond is between that H plus and whatever it's attached to. And so X could be, you know, the, the halogens or it could be anything else. The, the, the take home message is the, the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid, because the less likely it is to want to break this bond. The weaker that bond, the stronger the acid. And so the question is, what properties dictate that? And so we can see going down the, the, the halogen, the hydrohalides, hydrohalic acid series, HF has a strong bond, HCl weaker bond, HBr weaker, HI even weaker still. And so that directly translates to the strength of these. And so HF out of all these is the only weak acid. And so that's gonna have a, a, a lower Ka value. Whereas HCl, HBr, and HI, you'll remember those are on our strong acids list. Three of the six strong acids are HCl, HBr, and HI. And these are strong acids because the bond is so weak. And so the weaker the bond, the stronger the acid, the stronger the bond with HF, the weaker the acid. And so the same thing's true across all these binary acids. And it basically comes down to, for the most part in this series, it's going to be primarily dictated by uh, bond length as well as a little bit of contribution from um, the, the electronegativity difference. But uh, for the sake of just simplifying it, basically you can look at where these are on the periodic table and that will tell you um, uh, the strength of the acid. And so as you go down and to the right, well, you go down or to the right, you're going to increase the strength of the acid. You're going to decrease the strength of the base. And so um, going this way, we see CH4, NH3, H2O, HF. HF is going to be the strongest acid out of this series here. HCl will be the strongest acid here. Comparing HF and HCl, HCl is a stronger acid than HF. And so acid strength across the series strengthens as you go down and to the right on the periodic table. So going, going beyond those binary acids, and so we, we have non-binary or sometimes referred to as polyatomic acids. It basically says it has more than two elements. And so it's a large class of them. Uh, this encompasses a lot of things. Basically anything that's acidic that's not binary is a polyatomic acid of some kind. 
And so for the sake of this class, we're going to focus on two subclasses of these polyatomics. One is ternary acids or oxoacids, basically oxygen plus other things. And the other class is carboxylic acids, which you'll find is very important both in synthetic organic chemistry as well as biochemistry because these carboxylic groups show up everywhere. And so for the ternary acids or oxoacids, we're essentially talking about an OH group plus some kind of element plus oxygens around it or not around it. And so you can see here, OH group, some element, oxygens around it, OH group, some element, oxygens around it. Carboxylic acids, we're talking about a very specific COOH group, which we'll get back to in a little bit. So let's start with the oxoacids. And so we can make predictions on this oxoacid based on what that element it is in the center. So we have an OH attached to something with maybe oxygens around it. That element tells us something about the strength. And so one way to think about this is, remember we talked about the strength of this bond. How strong is this OH, uh, this O and the H bonded together? And so one thing to think about is the electron density. Remember this line drawn between that, that's essentially shared electrons between the two of them. And if it doesn't want to share electrons, that makes this bond weaker. And if this bond is weaker, then it makes it a stronger acid. And so we really have to think about how does this Z and this O affect the electrons here and the strength of that bond. And so well, we can break this down in terms of electronegativity of this Z element. So when you think about electronegativity, it basically says how strongly does this pull electron density towards it? If it pulls it really strong, if the electronegativity is high, it basically wants to keep electrons towards itself and not donate those electrons to this OH. If it doesn't give up those electrons, it's weakening this bond. And so the acid strength goes up. And so let's take a look at an example of this. HOCl versus HOBr, right? We have an OH, an OH, we have a Cl attached, a Cl attached. We really want to know how this element over here, the Cl and Br, affects this bond right here. So when you look at the periodic table, you can look at the uh, list of electronegativities. Electronegativities go up as you go up the periodic table. Cl minus is, or Cl is more electronegative than Br. And so what does that mean? It means that Cl is less, less willing to give up its electrons than Br is, at least less willing to give up electron density. And so if you look at electronegativity, oxygen wins, right? And so oxygen is going to start pulling towards it no matter what. But basically, oxygen can pull harder from the Br because it's less electronegative than it can from the Cl. So what's the implication of that? If oxygen is pulling electrons towards it strongly, it means there's more electron density here, which means this is going to be a stronger bond than this. It basically says, you know, it, it can't it can't pull away from Cl as fast or as hard as it can from Br. And so Br is effectively going to donate more of its electron density this way. The more electron density is going to uh, increase this bond and its bond strength, and it's going to make it a weaker acid. And so if you look up the Ka values, that's true. And so we made a prediction based on just electronegativity saying this is going to give up more electron density and make this bond stronger. This is going to give up less and make that bond weaker. If this is weaker, that means it should favor the product side less and or it, uh, it should favor the product side more it's willing to give up that h plus and so you get a, a ka of 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8 whereas with broh you get a ka of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 9. this is a smaller number um, this guy is a weaker acid this is a larger number this is a stronger acid and it's basically because this one has a less, less electron density here less electron density here the other thing that can affect these oxoacids is the stuff attached to that Z element. And so we said, how, how willing is that Z to give up electron density? That still holds true. And so the less electron density, weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. But the other factor in play here on these oxoacids is the number of oxygen atoms. And so let's look at this series here. And so all three of these, or all four of these have this OH group. They all have a Cl central atom. The only difference is this has no oxygens attached beyond this OH. This has one, this has two, this has three. And those oxygens affect the acid strength. And so you can think about it, O is still going to win this battle, right? O is going to pull away from Cl. But on these other ones, you have two competing oxygens. So that oxygen is going to pull density that way. Um, so you're going to have less going towards this OH. On this one, you're going to have both these oxygens pulling, even less going towards that OH. All three oxygens pulling, you're going to have less less going towards that OH. And remember, the amount of electron density or how much electrons go towards this bond directly dictates the strength. And so effectively, this is going to be a weaker bond than this, than this, than this.
And so what you effectively see is that's how exactly how it's uh, reflected. And so your Ka value, this is a strong acid. The reason it's a strong acid is because all these oxygens are pulling electron density away really hard, weakening this bond, making this a stronger acid, which is why you have a big number. It's one times 10 to the 10 or something like that. It's approximate because it's hard to estimate. This guy, you take away one, elect or one oxygen, it pulls away less. And so this one's going to donate more electrons to this OH than this does, which means this is going to be a weaker acid. And that's exactly what you see. One times 10 to the two. Take uh, Remove another oxygen. This one donates to the OH. Weaker acid. This one donates a whole bunch. It's a weaker acid still. And so if you had to memorize, you'd say increase the number of oxygens around these oxo acids and they become a stronger acid. The reason that happens is it's pulling and pushing electron density differently. This one pulls away that electron density pretty strong. It makes this bond weaker and makes it stronger. This one lacks those oxygens, which means this is a stronger bond, which means this guy is a weaker acid. And so the, the same idea holds true. How willing is this atom to give up to this OH bond? And also how much are these things on the outside, in particular oxygen atoms, pulling away Away from that center. And so oxygen is uh, electron withdrawing. It pulls the electron density away. It makes this bond weaker and it makes it a stronger acid. All right, so the other subclass we're talking about is carboxylic acids. And like I said previously, this is kind of a preview to um, organic chemistry where you start talking a lot about functional groups. We briefly talked about this with Lewis dot structures. But one particular functional group you'll see a lot is this carboxylic acid or this COOH or CO2H. Uh, in fact, it shows up a lot of different places from benzoic acid to aspirin to um, the vitamins to this. You can see this is an amino acid. Uh, in fact, peptide chains, they have an N terminus and an O terminus. The O terminus is actually a carboxylic acid. And so these carboxylic acids show up everywhere. And the, they're acids like it's described. It's a carboxylic acid. And so this COOH gives up an H plus to give you the CO minus, which is the conjugate base. And then you have whatever R is attached to it. R is just a generic describing whatever this uh, black highlighted portion of these molecules are. And so it turns out we can make some predictions about acid strength just based on what's hanging off the end of the acid, what this R group is. And so if the COOH is always the same, the only thing that can be affecting the difference in how strong that OH interaction is, is this R group. And so a general take home uh, is that the stronger this R group or the, the more electronegative this R is, the stronger the acid will be. It's basically saying if R is electronegative, it pulls away from this OH bond, which means it makes the acid stronger. And so we can make a prediction of, let's say, benzoic acid versus chlorobenzoic acid. The difference between these two, this has an H off the back, this has a Cl off the back. If we think about this in terms of electron density and where electrons are pushing and pulling, Chlorine is more electronegative than H. Chlorine is going to pull electrons this way. The consequence is it's going to weaken this OH bond. And so you'd expect, just based on electronegativity alone, this will be a stronger acid than this. And you can see that in terms of the Ka values. This is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5. This is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4. Means this one favors products more. This one wants to give up its proton. This is a stronger acid than this. And that's exactly what you'd predict based on electron density. And so we could do this across uh, all sorts of different combinations. You could look at a um, hydrogen versus chlorine versus a fluorine. Fluorine is more electronegative. Chlorine is less electronegative. H is even less electronegative still. So if you had to draw your arrows, you'd say chlorine pulls a little bit here, fluorine pulls more, you'd expect this to be a stronger acid, and that's exactly what you see. 2.6 times 10 to the minus 3 versus 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 versus 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And so again, electron density is pulling towards the electronegative atom. It weakens that bond. This has the largest Ka, or it's the strongest acid. Uh, interestingly, it also matters how close that electronegative atom is. And so chlorine in both these cases, these both have the same formula. The only difference is the chlorine is on the tail end of this carbon chain, whereas this chlorine is closer to this carboxylic group. But we can make a prediction. Because this chlorine is closer, it should pull harder. It's electronegative, it pulls electron density. It should pull harder than one, say, at the tail end of it. And so we'd expect this to be a stronger acid than this. And that's exactly what you see in the Ka values, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 versus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Not only is it stronger, but it's two orders of magnitude stronger, which is a lot, right? This is a way bigger number. This is a much stronger acid than this guy is. And so that's where those Ka values come from. And so not only does the nature of the atom matter, but also the proximity of that electronegative atom also matters.
And so since we, we've come up with this relationship between, you know, structure and uh, acidity, like how much does it weaken that OH bond? How is it willing to give up that, um, that proton? Well, that's, uh, we can relate that back to basicity as well. So if you remember back from the previous lecture, we talked about KW equal KA plus or times KB basically says if the KA, if the acid is strong, the conjugate base is weak. If the base is strong, the conjugate acid is weak. And that's a direct byproduct of this structural property, right? Remember when we compared this uh, C acid versus chloroacetic acid this one's the stronger acid well what does that mean in terms of the conjugate so if you take each one of these and give up a proton you'll you'll make the conjugate base and what's important about this is effectively this one pulls away which means this one doesn't want protons since this one's really willing to give up protons this guy doesn't want protons this is less willing so this is more willing to accept protons and so it turns out this is a stronger acid but its conjugate is a weaker base Likewise, we can look at the oxo uh, series and we can say, okay, we know this one has an extra oxygen atom. It's pulling away. This one's the stronger acid. Well, what does that mean for the conjugate base? If this is the stronger acid, it means the conjugate doesn't want to accept protons, which this is the weaker base. And so even if, we, even if we don't know the exact numbers, we can look at a structure and we can say, okay, where's the electron withdrawing atoms? What's the strength of it? And how does that dictate the relative strength of acidity between them? And we can make a prediction just looking at the structure, not only the strength of the acid, but also the relative strength of the conjugate base. All right, so to summarize what we've talked about, um, there's six common strong acids and bases. Um, we, we have to memorize those, unfortunately, but for everything else, we have you know weak acids, and weak acids have Ka values, weak bases have Kb values, and those Ka and K values, B values, are dictated by the composition of them. And so we did two subcategories. We talked about binary acids and non-binary binary or polyatomics. Uh, binary acids is basically hydrogen plus some other element. It's at least two elements, but it can be more than two atoms. And the strength is dictated basically by the strength of the bond, um, which the uh, uh, essentially the acid strength or that strength of the bond becomes weaker. This acid strength becomes stronger as you go down into the right on the periodic table. For the non-binaries, we, we partition it into oxo acids and carboxylic acids. We talked about how the electronegativity of that Z atom affects the acidity as well as the number of oxygen atoms. We talked about carboxylic acids in terms of how electronegative is this R, what's the strength of that electron withdrawing, and what's the position of that atom, and that's going to dictate the acidity. Um, we also related, if we know something about the relative strengths of um, acids, we can say something about the conjugate base. Remember, Ka times Kb equals Kw, uh, which means if we have a stronger acid, a strong Ka based on electron withdrawing of whatever R group there is, it means the conjugate base is going to be weaker. And so we can tie those relationships together. All right, so that closes out 14.3. We're going to skip over hydrolysis of salt solutions. So the next uh, presentation will be on 14.5, where we'll talk about polyprotic acids.